Hello and welcome to our channel called The Wander. Are you new to RVing? Maybe you bought a new RV or like us, a used RV that you've spent time remodeling and now it's time to get out on the road. This video we're gonna talk about 10 things that we wish we knew before we made the transition to full-time RVing. And this is not necessarily if you're looking to go full-time, it's just things that would have made life a whole lot easier, a lot simpler as we picked up and left on the road. We've been full-time RVing for the past five years and uh, we've learned a lot of things as we've been traveling, but we still remember the early days of RVing. We think you're gonna get a lot out of this video and we hope the same. So please make sure to like it, send us a, a comment or a question if you have it and always feel free to reach out to us. So let's get into it. Here's our number one, enjoy the lifestyle. It's easy to say, you know why you're wanting to RV. Everybody wants to RV to go to beautiful places and see beautiful things, have beautiful experiences, but really you are gonna face all kinds of good, bad, and ugly situations along the road. And we kind of didn't think about that when we first started traveling. I remember our second day on the road, we hit a water crossing and it was really shallow, but it was, for us, it was, it was crazy. It was literally our second day ever of RVing. We'd never gone out and practiced RVing at all in RV, and now we have this little river crossing, and we freaked out, and we panicked, and it wasn't that big of a deal. It wasn't at all. And then a couple <laughs> minutes later, we're on a one-way road going up a mountain pass, and we're like... That was even worse than the water crossing. <laughs> but, but we freaked out about it, and now we've done 10 times more. So yeah. um, sometimes you just have to remind yourself that you're on this journey to enjoy it and to have fun, and that's something that we didn't really understand when we first started out. We were on a mission to drive from our everything we left behind in Florida to Alaska and then from Alaska to Argentina. And so at times it felt like, oh, we got to go, 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 go. We got to do this. We got to do this. We got to get here. We got to get there. And some of that fun kind of fell off of why we were doing what we were doing. And so that would be number one piece of advice is know why you want to RV and be ready to come back to that. Maybe write it down talk with your spouse or your partner or your kids or whoever and say, let's just bring it to mind every now and then. This is why we're RVing. It's supposed to be fun. Sometimes it's not, but find the joy in it anyway. Number two, things will break. How many things? A lot of things. Everything. <laughs> things break on the road, especially if you're like us and you love traveling through Baja, Mexico, bumpy roads, bumpy anything, even highways in the United yeah, States. Yeah, there's even roads in the U.S. that are terrible and bumpy. <laughs> and when your whole life is inside your RV, even if it's just for a weekend, even if it's just one week out of the year or two weeks out of the year, you're packing your entire life for that moment into your RV. And as you're driving, things are going to break. We've had all kinds of things break on us from uh, mechanical issues with different RVs that we've had to simple things like door hinges and the, the locking mechanisms on cabinet doors. So because things will probably break on you while you're RVing, it's great to have the right tools. And a good frame of mind, knowing in advance things are going to break. It was our first week on the road, I think, when our refrigerator broke. And like, our door handle. And our door handle. <laughs> we were locked out of our camper. And like it was so frustrating because frustrating we're like, we've got this RV, it was a truck camper, we've got this truck camper and it's new to us and so nothing can break but sure enough things broke right off the bat and we weren't mentally prepared for that so as lindsay pointed out having the right tools um this i use this almost every day it's just a phillips head screwdriver but it's a multi-purpose uh, multi-head you can put any kind of um, head in there that you need flathead or otherwise use this almost daily and same thing having a nice screw gun same purpose um, but just something simple like that having the right tools around for when things break. Yeah, and having tools to, you know, fix a flat, repair a tire, um, anything you need like that, or having like the right insurance for roadside assistance. And we'll cover all that stuff in another video, um, but definitely having the mindset that things are going to break and understanding it doesn't have to end your entire trip. Next up, number three would be to invest in creature comforts. What are creature comforts? There are things that you maybe wouldn't necessarily pack into an RV if that was all you were thinking about, but they're things that make you comfortable and kind of feels like home like, a little bit. Yeah. So for instance, this ceramic mug right here is a creature comfort for me because I like to drink my coffee out of a nice ceramic mug with a handle. And yes, it is breakable and we don't highly recommend putting breakable stuff in an RV. I really enjoy having this mug to drink my coffee out of in the mornings. So a big priority for us is getting a good night's sleep. 
and that's even for weekend RVers that are just going out for a couple of nights. You're going to want a good night's sleep. And most RVs, whether you buy new or used, they come with usually really terrible mattresses. They're usually thin, they're not that comfy, and yeah, you are camping, but do you really want to go out on a weekend trip and not get a wink of sleep? You're not going to enjoy your weekend at all. Yeah, so if so, you're coming back tired on Sunday afternoon because you were out all weekend and you weren't sleeping well, then you need a vacation from your vacation. And so as Lindsay's saying, a great night's sleep is super important. And that's why we'd say one of the biggest creature comforts you can invest in would be a high quality mattress like the one that we have from RVmattress.com. Yep, so we have the Aurora Lux Hybrid from RVmattress.com by Brooklyn Bedding. And we absolutely love it. Um, they make all sorts of styles, sizes. They make them uh, in bunk sizes for your kids. They make them in queen, kings, all um, the right sizes for RVs. So like if you have a queen short like us in our motorhome, they make that. Um, and you can get medium, firm, soft. You can get the hybrid mattress like we have, or you can just get a normal uh, memory foam mattress, which are also really nice. So the website is really easy to use and it'll walk you through everything you need to know about picking out the best mattress for you um, from the different sizes to the different levels of firmness. As Lindsay pointed out with ours, we decided to go with a hybrid. So it combined the traditional spring mattress with the memory foam, or you could just go with straight memory foam. The website's going to walk you through each of the features of the mattress so you can pick out the perfect mattress for you. They also have a 120 night sleep trial, so if you go out on that weekend RV trip and you do not like the mattress, you can still return it. Yep, they ship to you wherever you are, so if you're on the road like us, we was able to ship to a campground we were going to, but if you are a newbie and you're just getting started, it ships right to your house, it comes in a box, so you're able to take the mattress out lay it down where you're going to have it in your uh, in your camper, cut open the plastic, and then whoosh, it just pops and it's right usually out. it's ready to sleep on within like 30 minutes. It's pretty awesome. And this is, uh, as we said, creature comforts are something that we would say investing in a mattress period is a very smart thing, but this was something that we wanted to feel like we were sleeping at home. So we also have blackout curtains we put in the bedroom. We've got a door that we can close and we've got a special fan, a vent fan that blows down on us like a ceiling fan. So all those things combined with this mattress give us the feeling that we could be staying in an apartment, a condo, a house, anywhere in the world. It just so happens to be our home wherever we're parked. So if you're looking to get a new mattress for your camper, you can go to our link. It's rvmattress.com forward slash called to wander and that will save you 20% on your mattress purchase. Number four on the list is wait to fill those empty spaces in your RV. What do we mean by that? Well, we just talked about adding some creature comforts, so it sounds kind of contradictory. You're adding things that you may not necessarily need, but then you're gonna have some kind of room somewhere, and the anxiety of being an RVer is like, oh, I gotta fill it, because everybody yeah. knows RVs are smaller than apartments, condos, houses, etc. And so you feel like, well, I can't have empty space. I got to fill it with something. Basically means that don't overpack for your trip. Okay, you do not need to take everything. There's going to be a lot of stuff that, um, you know, we say just go out, hit the road, and enjoy it the first couple of times. And over that period of time, you will find out what you're going to need or want uh, later on. And there's also so many places on your trip, if you notice that, hey, you know, we forgot this and we need to get it, most of those things like that, you're going to be able to find at Walmart in the RV section. You're going to be able to find at um, RV stores. They're all over the place. You will be able to find those items. Our fifth tip for RV newbies is to travel slower and stay longer. There's a variety of different ways that you can say that. It doesn't mean necessarily drive 30 miles an hour down the highway. But what we mean is maybe pick an area, a region, a state, and a city, a city mm -hmm. whatever whatever it is of interest and don't feel like you have to run around and see it all i think our first year on the road we tried to see everything, everything. and you can't we were in a place i think one night two nights at most was two nights and then it was on to the next we were go 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 constantly and i think we put like forty thousand miles on our truck yeah it was, it was crazy <laughs> it was crazy of course we were driving to alaska from florida so just if we went straight would be a long drive anyway um, but we did it in this twisty turny, wanted to see everything along the way. And the reality is you can't see everything along the way. 
So we've started to change how we travel to traveling slower and staying longer. Um, one of the reasons why is fuel prices make it incredibly convenient not to be driving constantly. Um, so your fuel costs go down when you travel that way. Plus, you're able to spread out, get more comfortable in an area. If you have a vehicle, you can drive around a tow vehicle or your truck. If you're pulling a trailer or a camper, you can get out and you can go and see and do a whole lot more than if you're just passing through for a day or two. And also, if you stay longer in areas, like at a campground, you get a discount for staying a week or a month. That's going to be cheaper for you. Um, you're going to be pulling your trailer less or driving your motorhome less so things are less likely to break on the camper or the RV which is great as well. Number six on our list is to invest in camping memberships. Before we even hit the road, before we knew anything about RVing or camping, we were already members of several RVing memberships that we knew were going to save us money in the long run and not just save us money but give us options for where we could camp as we were traveling. The most important memberships that we always list there, of course, is Harvest Hosts. If you're not familiar with Harvest Hosts, we've got a link in the description where we break down a little bit more about that. Plus, we've got a discount for you if you want to go through our link as well um, to be able to join that membership at a discount. Uh, what you can do with that is you can camp in unique places, vineyards and breweries and distilleries, alpaca farms, um, golf lavender courses. farms, golf courses, yeah, and museums. All sorts of we've places. stayed in all kinds of places. And a lot of times it's been last minute yep. where we didn't know where we're called to wander. So we wander and then we don't know where we're going to spend the night. So Lindsay will go through the app and it's really helpful. She'll find places nearby where we want to be. We'll always try to look for things that we want to, you want to support the businesses where you're staying. So Lindsay will look, for instance, we like having uh, cattle that's grass fed. And so she might find a grass fed ranch where we can camp and then we'll purchase um, ground beef or steaks or whatever it is. We get a unique camping experience, and instead of paying camping fees, we're actually buying groceries or other things that we would buy anyway. And another great membership to have is Passport America, and they offer 50% off at participating campgrounds, which is really nice. We don't usually stay in campgrounds, but when we do, 90% of the time they're Passport America campgrounds. For us, we like to do a lot of boondocking and getting off grid, but we also have comforts that we like, like a nice hot shower. Uh, we need to do laundry from time to time. Sometimes it's nice just to plug in, even though we've got great batteries and solar. Sometimes it's good to plug in and, or if we need to run the air condition, which doesn't run off of our batteries. So when we do that, we always look for Passport America campgrounds because we like to save money. And there's usually a campground within the general range of where we're planning on staying. There are other memberships out there. We've got a post on that that we're putting in the description. Um, but having those is just another tool that you can have in your back pocket not only to help you save money as you're camping, but also to give you options on where you can camp and unique opportunities where you can camp and combine other activities with that. The seventh tip we have for anybody who's getting started with RVing is to have an itinerary or a plan, but of course to be flexible. Again, we are called to wander. We set in motion. Our plan was to drive from Florida to Alaska and then to turn south and drive from Alaska to Argentina. And if we had stuck with that plan, We'd be, I don't even know where we would be <laughs> because all kinds of things happen. We had yeah. breakdowns, we ran out of money a couple times. Oh, and then the world shut down. Can you imagine? Yeah, the, COVID. the idea is have an idea of where you're going and what you want to do. So maybe it's want to visit all 48 contiguous states on a one big driving tour, or maybe you do want to visit all the national parks. Some people have that as a mission, or maybe it's to drive Route 66, or whatever your theme might be or your itinerary. It's good to have that so you have a mission and a purpose. But just know it's probably not going to go exactly the way you have planned, which is a good tip in general about life. Number eight on our list is invest in quality gear. Not all the fancy stuff and not all the time, but definitely understand the idea of value when it comes to buying things specific for your RV. So when we first hit the road, we had a cheap grill. Um, and we really didn't know what exactly we needed, but we had this cheap little grill that we picked up to cook on. And it's a tailgating grill you screw in yeah. one of the one-pound propane tanks into. And fancy. it lasted maybe two cooks. Like, I think I cooked on it twice before it completely fell apart. It fell apart. <laughs> we lost the nuts and bolts. It didn't work the way we thought it was going to work when we were camping. It took a long time to set up, a long time. It was not very efficient. 
and so what we decided to do was to invest in something one that would be better like better use but two that Lindsay really enjoyed using and that was our Blackstone grill we're not trying to sell you a Blackstone grill though we do think you're gonna appreciate it we're just using that example to say it was something that we kind of rushed to purchase I think the grill was even given to us in the beginning which sometimes free is better than not free uh, and sometimes free is not better than not free and so that's an example air compressor as well we purchased this cheaper bigger bulkier air compressor when we first started out and we used it one time it took up more space than I can remember like our whole back seat of our truck and then it turns out there's a little smaller fits right here it's a little bit more expensive but the value of that buy air air compressor is so much better in the long term and so understanding the idea of value when it comes to purchasing things because especially when it comes to moving parts things that rattle around you're going to have things break as we've talked about and so if it's a quality appliance or a quality device chances of it breaking even in RV conditions is going to be is going to be less our number nine tip for beginning RVers is one that applies to everybody regardless of how long you've been on the road and that is to invest in preventative maintenance for your RV for your rig your trailer your vehicle whatever component you have or whatever you have as your RV invest in the preventative maintenance um, we it's not that we ignored it with our first RV, but we bought our truck for about $7,000. And in the course of the next two years of owning it, we invested about $15,000 into repairing it. Some of it was things we had no control over. Some of it were things we didn't really know to look for. That allowed us as we moved into our next motorhome, our next RV, to kind of look at things differently, to invest in the preventative maintenance. And we have not had to, outside of the preventative maintenance with this RV for the last two years, we don't have to spend any money on any kind of breakdown Yeah, because issues. we did we did everything up front before we hit the road in this thing. We made sure uh, all the dry rotted hoses were replaced. Everything was done. Belts, fluids was all flushed. We took care of everything. We redid all the brakes, basically all the important parts got before we hit the road. New tires. We like discount tire because they're in almost every state. And you can go and get your scheduled rotate and balance, which again, if you're not rotating and balancing, you're putting uneven wear on the tires. All it takes is one tire to, to have a blowout to completely change, I mean, your, your entire whole trip, your, whole yeah. trip, your RV, your life, everything. It's, so. Yeah, it's also smart to invest in nicer tires, especially for your trailers, especially if you bought a new trailer, or even if you bought a used trailer. You think those tires look nice and new, but you need to check the date on those tires. If they're older than seven, five to seven years, you need to replace them because like we said, a blowout is going to be catastrophic um, to your trip and it won't be fun. So make sure you have the best, nicest, newest tires on your motorhome, RV, or camper. And that's just an easy example of something that people very often overlook is, well, I just bought this RV, it's got great tires, I'm just going to go ahead and start RVing on it. But your entire life, whether it's for the weekend, for a month, for full-time like us, your entire life is riding on those tires at that time. So whether you're pulling a trailer, whether you got a truck camper or a truck or a motorhome or a, a Class A motorhome, you, you just want to make sure the tires are good, the brakes are good, that you've changed out all the fluids, that you're keeping up with the preventative maintenance. Even our generator, we make sure we get our generator regularly maintained. So when we need to use it, it's just a press of a button and on it turns. Otherwise, life's a lot more frustrating and is going to be a lot more expensive and it could also be even more dangerous if you're not keeping up with the preventative maintenance. Last but not least on our list, number 10, is to have a checklist. You mean I'm allowed to have lists? Yes. I love He's the my list lists. maker. <laughs> I love my lists. I am type A personality. But when it comes to RVing, especially if you're, if you're a beginner, which is this is for you, you're going to need to get into ro routines and that's especially true if you only go out on a weekend once a month or two weeks out of the year or whatever the frequency may be. You might forget some of the processes that you need to remember when it comes to how you set up camp, particularly how you break down camp. So and a checklist is great to have so you don't forget something. So when you are breaking down camp, you don't want to leave the RV plugged into your electrical outlet and drive off with it plugged in. Don't be that person, but that person exists. And if you're watching this, maybe you are that person and it's happened to you. Those kinds of things happen and they don't happen intentionally. It just happens because you forget. You know, things like making sure that when you pull your slides in that everything's ready to go, like the roof is brushed off, 
uh, important things like that just to make your trip set up and break down easier and better and so that things don't go wrong. And it's also great to go slow. Don't rush through your checklist. Make sure you go, you go slow and thorough with it. Travel days for us will involve me spending a lot of time outside where Lindsay will handle the inside checklist. I'm usually working on the outside checklist. And it's super important to, again, I will check under the tires from the back, from the front, from the side, make sure there's no hoses that are dro dropped, make sure there's no leaking fluid, something that would indicate that there's gonna be a problem later on when we're driving. And it has happened at times where we've noticed things like like an oil leak or, or a fuel leak with our truck camper. That was one of the issues we had, that because we had a checklist that said check behind the tires, check underneath the, the uh, RV, that we were able to see some of the things that would have caused bigger issues later. The whole point of this video is to try to save you time, frustration, money, effort, and safety, of course, in not uh, doing the wrong thing or rushing through something and not having the best experience you can have RVing, because clearly we love RVing. It started, we thought it was gonna be two years, it's five years now, and I don't see it stopping anytime soon. Hopefully from these 10 tips, you've been able to take some kind of information that will help you, depending on what level you're at. Again, if you're getting ready to go right off on the road for the very first time, there's a lot you're gonna be learning and absorbing. Hopefully we can help you out with that. If there's something you've been doing this for a couple years, but just on the weekends, maybe we've got you to the next level there. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. If you have learned something, please leave a comment, a positive comment, or if you have a question, leave us a question. We'll get to it. Uh, we answer all comments and, and questions in the comment section. If you haven't already done so, like the video, share with your friends and family our story or this video, and... And if you think there's anything that we left out on our tips, leave a comment as well. We'd love to know your, your thoughts and ideas, any tips that would help uh, a newbie for RVing. Thanks for being a part of our wander. We look forward to sharing more awesome, exciting information for helping you make the most of the abundant life on the road. Thanks for being a part of our journey. We'll check you later.